We're going to take a look at something this morning. I know that this is right on time. God gave me this one evening coming back. You know, we were in, in, in our meetings and I was driving home from uh, the meeting that night is about 10, 1030. And on the way home, the Lord started talking to me about something that I needed to do. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to take care of that this morning. We sat in meetings and what we heard the entire time that we were there was the Holy Spirit laying out for the church God's mandates for 2016. And would you like to know what they were, what they were pretty much the Holy Spirit had speaker after speaker after speaker after speaker speak about? I mean, all together, there was probably about 15 different people that we had an opportunity to listen to. Well, maybe not 15, maybe it was about four, 13. The meeting started out bright and early on a Tuesday morning, dealing with us about using our authority. How to walk in our authority. Then it went on the importance of your faith and walking in love. And then it went on to back to using your authority again. And then they started talking about manifesting who we are in the earth this year. And that just kept going on and on and on. After speaker after speaker after speaker. They don't, they don't get together and decide we're going to preach this this year. They all come with their own messages that God gave them to preach. But what the Holy Spirit did was take and 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 weave together a fabric for 2016 that basically said this the entire meeting now the the last service of the meeting uh richard roberts or roberts son preached on the importance of the healing power of god being reestablished like it was in the late 40s and 50s again that anointing is building so here's what we heard 2016 will be the year that God is requiring us to walk in our authority, stand in our faith, abiding in the love of God, and seeing the miraculous of God happen. That's what God's expectations are for us this year. Now, how familiar does that sound from what we've been talking about since uh, New Year's Eve service here? Now, what the Lord gave for me to do, because I'm determined, and I hope that you are just as, just as determined as I am, not to be the same this year as we were last year. What are you willing to do different this year to see your life in God go to the next level? I'm determined to see my life move forward. I'm determined to see this church take the next step in God. So the Holy Spirit began to talk to me about some adjustments that need to be made. And part of it has to deal with what's going on in this room right now. Amen. You may say what you may not want to agree with it or you are whatever. But it makes no sense to come out to the house of the Lord, spend time here, and then leave the exact same way sure you came. Sure enough. Yeah. If you went to KU Medical Center, and when they were through with you and you left, you were the exact same way you were before you got there, you would have said something was wrong, wouldn't you? Amen. Wouldn't you? If you spent money to take a class, a course, and didn't get anything out of it, at the end of that course, you would have said, something was wrong with this. Amen. Then how do you justify spending an entire church service, sitting in an entire church service, and when you leave, you are the exact same way you were before you came in? Amen. Something's wrong with that. 
And the Lord was talking to me about this. Why is it that, and it's not just here, but why is it the people of God are so lethargic, heavy, stubborn to move? What's going on? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Your spirit man loves to praise God. Your spirit man wants God with everything it has. Your spirit wants God, needs God, thrives, feeds on God. But many of you allow a spirit of stubbornness to stop you from moving. You allow it because you won't use your authority and tell it no. And there's a reason that the enemy tries to influence you not to want to move for God. He will allow you to move at the Chiefs game. Yes. He will allow you to move when you are in the clubs. Yeah. He will allow you to move when your favorite song come on while you're riding down the street in your car. But on a Sunday morning worship service, it's like something comes over you and you just can't seem to move. Why is that? So the Lord told me to teach on today because I was going to do it on, t- on the Tuesday night. But the Lord said, no, you do it on a Sunday morning. The function of a church service. We're going to look at each piece. Now, the Lord told me in prayer this morning, this is vitally going to be vitally important to your success for 2016. For those that will plug in and engage, you're going to see things move for you. But for those that will continue to be stubborn and lethargic, you will stay where you are. Because you will not engage to the point that you need to engage to move forward. Now, he says, now what you're going to, the reason this is going to be important is because what will be established on a Sunday morning will carry over to your week and it will be the extension into your weeks. But the Sunday morning will be the place that it stirs to take you into the following weeks. I don't know about you. But I refuse to, to wake up January 1st, 2017, and a whole year has gone past and nothing has changed in my life. Amen. Especially what I hear God doing. What God, I sat there in that meeting. Everything that God spoke and showed me at the end of 2001, the beginning of 2002, when we started this church. It's here. I see it again. I thought I started to believe I missed it. Well, Lord, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I got over excited. Maybe I, you know, I, I, I made the picture too big in my mind. Maybe I started to think that way until I sat in this meeting this year. It's here. Everything God said to me while we exist in Kansas City, I get it. I see it. It's time. And it's not just time for Kansas City. God is coming, folks. Jesus is on his way back. And there is a remnant of people that have to come into the body of Christ. And we're not going to get it done lethargic, uh, stubborn, and unable to move. Can't happen. So we're going to look at this this morning because you need to understand why is it that you are required to come to church? Is it just because it's something that we do on Sunday? Let's look at the book of Hebrews chapter 10. That's where we're going to start. And I'm going to take my time. So and, 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 and if you are that person that you got somewhere to be, then uh, just excuse yourself. And because I'm not rushing. Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 21 says, Have it in high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So there is a high priest over the house of God. Not just over the house of works of faith ministries, over the house of God. You are part of the house of God. Jesus is our high priest and he's over the house of God. 
And the Bible says, because of that, let us draw near with true hearts in full confidence of our faith. Now, what's, what's warned against your faith? Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. See, you're going to have to quit letting what you've done wrong outweigh what God has done right through Jesus. Amen. See, there's part of your problem. We get so focused on what's wrong in our lives till we begin to allow that to overshadow what God has done for us through the blood of Jesus. It says, let your heart be cleansed from that. Let your focus change. Confidence in faith. Faith of what? In what Jesus has accomplished for us. It's far better, far precious, way more superior than any sin that could go on. Because I heard in Romans it says, where sin does abound, grace much, much, much more abounds. There's nothing you can do that will ever be able to short-circuit God's work in your life. The only thing that can short-circuit the work of God in your life is your willingness not to receive. Amen. So it says, hey, get your heart right. Get that evil conscience out of there and have your bodies washed with pure waters. Let us hold fast the profession of faith without wavering, for he is faithful that is promised. Let us hold fast to what we've been saying. Let us hold fast to saying our God is good. Let us hold fast to saying our God is merciful. Let us hold fast to saying that our God is gracious and full of mercy. Let us hold fast to our confessions that we are the children of God. We are blessed and highly favored. Let us hold fast to that and not waver. Be strong and confident in your faith, believing that what God has done for us through Jesus is not in vain. Amen. Let us hold fast to it. That's your profession of faith. Who are you? I am the child of the living God. I am his child because he says so. I received him, I received his love, I've received his spirit, and my Bible tells me that I am bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, and I am blood of his blood because I'm a member of his house. And that's what it said about you. Yes. Let us hold fast that profession, not qualifying whether or not we belong to God based on what we do or don't do. It says he is faithful because he promised it, not you. He's faithful. And there's a scripture that says, even when we're faithless, God is still faithful. That's what the word of God says. Now, so let us hold fast to a profession of faith without a wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke one another unto love and unto good works. Quit being so selfish minded. Back to your evil conscience. You are so focused on what you're doing wrong. You are not even mindful of what God is wanting to do. That's right through you. He says here, we're supposed to be provoking one another. What does that mean? Encouraging. Edifying, building one another up. Hey, hey, I don't care what happened last week. God still loves you. Come on, let's get on back in here and keep going. Don't stop running. I haven't seen my brother or my sister in a few weeks. Let me find out what's going on with them. Provoking one another in love. Provoking one another. Hey, we got works to do. We got things to do. God's busy. God wants us out here. God needs our hands. God needs our mouth. God needs our feet. God needs our minds focused on him. Get that evil conscience out of here and let's stop being selfish and let's focus on what God is doing in 2016 and let's get our brothers and our sisters up and moving. Not sitting there stubborn and sad because something didn't go right in your life told you guys a few weeks ago whatever you focus on the most is what you're going to have the most of so if you keep sowing towards your problems and you keep sowing towards what's missing in your life and you keep sowing towards you all you're going to get is more of your problems more of what's wrong in your life 
because you're not sowing anything in the opposite direction of helping somebody else or sowing towards God. So let's provoke one another in love unto good works. Now, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Notice, this is a command from God. We are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together like some of the other folks are doing. But to exhort one another so much more as we see the day approaching. What day? The catching away of the church. So that's telling me there that as the, as the time of the rapture draws near, the pressures and the forces of darkness to cause you to stand still and be quiet strengthens or, or gets stronger. But it cannot overpower you if you will yield to him that has promised. So we have been required to assemble ourselves together. That's your church service. Why? Why is it that God, for the New Testament believer, has required that we assemble ourselves, that we come together as a group, as a group of believers? Why does he set up churches all over the world, or all over a city, all over a town? What is the purpose for it? Is it just for us to have something to do on a Sunday to check off our list and say we met with God? Or is there a greater purpose? I'm telling you this morning, there's a greater purpose and each facet of a church service is designed by God to meet a need in your life. Amen. I hadn't even thought about this until driving home last uh, that uh, week ago, uh, a few weeks ago from the meeting on my way back to the hotel to get into bed and go to sleep because I was tired. We've been at church. Uh, uh, I had been up since about 430 that morning. Uh, because you got to get up, get dressed, get there, get some decent seats, and then you're practically there all the rest of the day. And now it's 1030, almost 11 o'clock, somewhere in there, and I'm driving home. And the Lord starts talking to me about this. So when I got to the hotel, I had to sit in the parking lot to write it down so I wouldn't forget. So let's look at it. He pointed out to me four components four major components to a church service. And I'll give you the four and then we'll talk about them. Number one, the purpose for the praise and worship portion. There is a purpose for it. The purpose of the offering portion. There is a purpose for that. The preaching and teaching of the word. And then prayer. Four components, each one of them are significant and vitally important to your successful endeavors in your day-to-day -day life. And, and, and this morning he says, hey, you tell them that if they do not engage this year. See, this year, things have changed. It's not the same. It's changed. And I heard it, and everybody sitting in that meeting heard it. And the it 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 what is this is not going to be so much of a hype hype year. It's not about the hype hype year. This is about the show and tell year. This is the year that God is showing is 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 where the spirit of the Lord is going to begin to be released like never before in the earth and the manifestations of who he is and his love and his grace will be seen. This year is different. And it will be different for anybody that is willing to get involved in it. Anybody. I don't care if you got saved yesterday or you've been saved for 20 years. It makes no difference. It's about who will engage and allow themselves to become a clear channel and vessel for the power of God to flow through. Will that be you? It's going to be me. So, praise and worship. This is here. Yeah. Before I say that, let me say this. 
Well, they just in praise and worship right now. We can be a few minutes late. That is a lie from the enemy, and you're being robbed. Amen. You're being robbed. Amen. I was standing there, and the Holy Spirit kind of just brought this up in my mind. I, it had to come from him. I looked around, and the Lord kind of just said this in me. I, I kind of picked up on, on, on what he was getting ready to do here. And how many people, and I, now, hey, don't, don't get in your, hey, don't get in your feelings, because I'm going to say what I need to say this morning. Amen. How many folks was late? And then the Lord said, it's kind of just quickened me, but they're not late to work. How valuable, how honorable are we to jobs, but how dishonorable are we when it comes to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we can't even show up to service on time. I want you to hear it because we need to hear it, folks. It need to be said. That's dishonorable. Someone that hung on a cross for you, bled and died for you, sit at the right hand of the Father interceding for you on a daily basis, and you can't even show up on time. Which brings me back to why praise and worship is important. You're being robbed. Praise and worship does several things. <coughs> let's look at Psalms, well, Psalm 100 first. Let's go there. Let's, let's look at this. Now, now, get out your feelings. I rebuke the, the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. You are not going to have misconceptions and misideas being Amen. thought and said. Amen. I love everybody in here. You love everybody in here, but Doug Gunn, uh, the devil is a lie and he need to be exposed. Amen. Amen. And I'm not going to be intimidated. Amen. I refuse it. Amen. And don't you sit there and let him steal from you. Amen. Psalms 100. Verse 4, it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto God and bless his name. Amen. Enter in. Enter into his courts with what? You got to come up in here with a thankful heart. See, we're talking about praise and worship. I'm going to lay something out for you. Hey, it's all about praise isn't about what we can do for God. Praise is thankfulness of what he's already done for us. Amen. A thankful heart. Lord, you got me up out of my bed this morning. Thank you. I'm earning clothes that's going to look nice on my body. Thank you. I went into my room and shook my baby and they woke up. Thank you, Lord. We were able to go to a kitchen and have some food and praise God. We're going to drive to church in a nice car. Glory be to God. And there's gas in it. We're not walking this morning. We're leaving a house that we got up out of a warm bed. Thank you, Lord. See, praise, it says, enter to his gates with thanksgiving. You can't get to the praise without being thankful first. And thankfulness is a result of you recognizing how good God has been to you. Glory to God. Come on, That's what it's for. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and then I can come on into the course and praise him. See, if I get up out of my bed being thankful, being grateful, then praise is an automatic response. It's an automatic response. And it says this is how you to enter in to church, the gates. He was talking about the, the temple of their day, which would have been the church house of their day. They were to come in with a thank offering. 
which led to praise. Now, why is it that thankfulness needs to happen the moment your feet swing out the bed? See, you're setting an atmosphere that's following you all the way down to the church house. The moment your feet hit the floor, Lord, thank you. Glory to God. And you're just thanking God all the morning while you're getting ready and you then you got your praise music on or whatever you're doing. It's setting something for you. So that when you walk in here, because for I, I begin to ask the Lord, I'm like, well, Lord. So you're saying that praise says, I said, we got, so we come here and set the atmosphere of praise. He says, no, 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 no. He said, the atmosphere in here is fine. Because I'm here. So you're changing the atmosphere around them. It changes it around you. We don't need to set anything in here. What we need is for you to come in here is to agree with what's already set. Now, why? Here's the benefits of praise and worship service. Um, look at Psalms chapter 8. Now, everybody in here, we go through things. Things are going on. Things are pulling at you. Things are tugging at you. Nobody in here is exempt from problems. As long as you're in this world, Jesus says you're going to have trials and tribulations. But he says, be of good courage because I've already overcame them for you. Amen. So we're going to endure things. There are going to be things pulling at you. But just because there's something tugging at you doesn't mean you got to yield to it. Who's in charge here? The problem or you? So here's the first benefit of entering into his gates with thanksgiving and praising God. It shuts the devil's mouth. Let me read this here. Psalms chapter uh, 8, right? And verse 2. The Amplified Bible says, Out of the mouth of babes, infants, you have established strength because of your foes that you might silence the enemy and the avenger. Notice, out of the mouth of babes, You've established strength because of the enemy and the adversary, and you want to silence them. Now, for reading that scripture, you say, well, they got to do with praise. Well, let Jesus explain what it has to do with praise, because he quoted it in the Gospels. But he identified what strength represents or where strength is derived from. Matthew chapter 21. Let's look at that. Uh, hold on, I just lost where I was going. Matthew 21. And... Verse 15, and when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were all displeased. And he said unto them, Jesus said, here's thou what these say. And Jesus said unto them, you have heard, or it says, you have, uh, you have, I mean, yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and suckling thou hast perfect praise? Psalm says strength. Jesus says perfect praise. So did he misquote God? No. 
Because Jesus understands that if you're ever going to get to the strength, it's going to have to start with the praise. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When have you ever seen someone sad, miserable, burdened down, joyous? They don't go together, do they? But where there is thanksgiving and praise, there will be strength. Why will there be strength? Because he said so. When you come in here and don't praise, don't release yourself to the spirit of praise, and the Bible commands you to put your garment of praise on in Isaiah, but when you refuse to do it, you sit through a whole service and listen to the blah, 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 blah of the devil because his mouth hasn't been silenced yet. Because it says that do this, he does what? He silences the mouth of his enemies and the avenger. He shuts them up. In other words, it creates around you an atmosphere to hear from God and not the devil. There it is how folks can sit right in the house of God and get offended Amen. at the preacher for preaching the word of God. Why? Yeah. Because you're not thankful, you haven't praised God, and you're sitting there listening to the voice of the devil, and the devil's mouth is not silenced when it comes to you. You can sit in here, and there can be 5,000 people sitting in here, all hearing the same scriptures, and some are getting blessed, some are getting delivered, and some are being offended. Now, the ones that are being offended is the ones who refuse to move when God said, be thankful. Come on, let's praise. Get rid of it. See, what you're doing is when you're doing that and you're wrapping yourself in your garment, the angels around you, they're casting away and kicking back and commanding to get down so that there will be a clear channel for the presence of God and the word of God to come answer what you need to be answered. But if all you are hearing is this blah, 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 and you're here, you're missing everything God's doing. You're being robbed. Because all you thought of is just the praise and worship service. And for anybody who's going to be a part of a praise team, this is why it's vitally important for you to be on, 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 on point. Amen. Very important. It sets something. Psalms 22. God says, you deal with this. Psalms 22, verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Now notice something here. Let's deal with this. Israel will be considered who? God's people, right? Well, well who are we? God's people. Well, I just read there where it says God does what? Inhabits. He dwells. He initiates. He fans the flames of our praise. So when we come into a praise service and we engage in the praises of God, we're pulling the presence of God inward. We're releasing and we're pulling at the same time. Because I'm plugging into you, you plug it into me, we plug it into them, and the atmosphere is just growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. Growing for what? Growing for the manifestation of God. Because God's presence begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger. You could have a person sitting in the service and the service to everybody else is just as dry as it can be. But that person has praise and thanks in their heart. They fired up for God and the presence around them is just overflowing and they get blessed. But you sitting there looking like a prune. Amen. Yes. Yes. See, praise service, it, it creates an atmosphere conducive to receive. It shuts the devil down. It stops him. And so that God's presence can move in. But if you don't know that, you think, well, if I don't sing, that's okay. I don't have to. You're right. You don't have to do anything. But just realize 
you're being robbed. Well, I didn't get nothing out of the service today. Go back and check how engaged were you at the beginning. If you get to the end of the service, I ain't getting nothing out of it today, then go back and then figure out how engaged were you at the beginning. Because that may be the reason you had nothing at the end. Let's look at a picture of this. 1 Samuel. Chapter 16. read. This is, this is the story here. I don't have time to read all of it. But this is the story here where Saul, who had been in, called, anointed king of Israel, he had gotten off. And a spirit began to torment him. So one of the servants, because Saul was being tormented, to the, he, had, he, he couldn't get, you know, the spirit would come and it would come periodically. It didn't just stay all the time. It would come periodically. But when it came, he had no peace. He was tormented. I mean, panic attacks, anxieties, and all, all the stuff to go with it. And one of his servants says, hey, 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 king. Verse 16. Let our Lord now command your servants here from the Amplified before you to find a man who plays skillfully on the harp. And when the evil spirit from God, it wasn't from God, but when it comes, and God wasn't sending it, when it comes uh, upon you, he will play and you will be well. Notice. Let's go find someone that got some skill in this area of praise. And when the evil spirit tries to influence the atmosphere, this person will play with his skill and anointing yes. and stop him. Amen. Amen. Here's why you don't have, and I know I'm going to step on some toes on this one, it's going to be on YouTube, but so what? Here's why you don't have the devil, the devil, and the gay and lesbian folks run the praise and worship team. Amen. 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 I said it. You, I, I need some anointing up here. I need some skill up here. I need somebody that's going to be at home praising God up here, creating the atmosphere up here so that when they get here, they ain't sitting up here offended too. Well, she didn't let me lead the song, and he ain't playing the key right, and, uh, and here we go. We don't need that. We need some skill up here. We need some folks to know what they're doing up here. Well, we can't figure out what to do for them in the church. Let's put them all in the choir and the praise and worship team. That's a lie. That's a lie. Amen. <laughs> no, you don't. Amen. He said, let's go find someone who's what? Skilled. Amen. Know what they're doing. Why? Because we need to shut the devil down here. We need an atmosphere in here. And I don't have time to be here. Ding, 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 ding. You ain't getting nothing done. Amen. All off key. Can't sing. <laughs> Messing folks up? No. You need some skill up here. Amen. I know folks don't, may don't, don't, don't like that, but it's the truth. Amen. You need some skill up here. Why? Because we need to silence the enemy's mouth, and we need a clear atmosphere for God to move in. Amen. The world don't even do that. How many of you would spend your money to go to the next concert for Beyonce, whoever it was, and the, and the, and the keyboard player couldn't find the note, and, and the drummer was off beat, and, and Beyonce's voice was cracking? Are you going? No. Why? Because there's no skill up there. So why do we come down to the house of the Lord? We're just supposed to say, oh, well, it's going to be okay. Just going to let them do it. That's a lie. No. If that's not your area... Find somewhere else to go. Even God didn't do that. God separated out all the tribes, didn't he? And one whole particular tribe was for praise and worship. They were skilled to do it. If you wasn't in that tribe, then, hey, we ain't going to find nobody to lead the praise team. We're going down there to Judah and them. Who know how to get down with the instruments? We ain't going over here. 
You the priest, pray. So praise and worship has its place. It affects your openness and readiness to receive from God. That's why it's first. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving and come before his courts with praise. Shut the devil's mouth. Open up your heart and your mind and create an atmosphere for his presence to go to work in. So how many of you have been being robbed? Oh, well, we, we late. You got robbed. It's heavy here. Come on, lift your hands and praise God. <laughs> like you in the military. Stand at attention. Being robbed. And that's what's literally in the spirit, that's what's going on. And I know it's going on because your heart is crying out, what's wrong with you? And you hear that at the back of your mind and you stand there at attention. Or you'll do this. You still ain't really, you, you still ain't submitting. So praise is expressive. It's joyful. It's Nobody at the, down at the funeral home praising, having a praise service. They sad. You ain't heard no, nobody at the cemetery, the, the, the corpse in there, they not having a praise service. Or it's quiet, isn't it? Then why should on a Sunday morning it's not supposed to be quiet? There's no dead people in here. We're not having a Sunday morning funeral service. Jesus did some work. This is an exciting time. This is a joyful time. Glory to God. I look back over my life and see where you brought me from. How am I going to stand here and be quiet? Man, come on. Mm. I'm trying not to get started here. But I'm tired of quiet. How would you feel if when you went to God, he was quiet? Nothing happened. He said nothing back to you. You begin to think something was wrong, wouldn't you? Well, what do you think is going on when he's asking you, can you at least tell me thank you? Do you love me? Come on, folks. Come on. We're being robbed. And that is not who we are. Offering time. What's the purpose of it? Just so we can collect some money, pay the light bill, and the water bill, and the gas bill. That's a part of it. But that's not the true purpose. That's just a benefit of. But the purpose of it is to affect you physically. In the physical uh, manifestations of God is for physical increase for your life. Physical increase. You should physically be seeing things change in your life from the participation of offering time. That's what it's there for. The tithe does what? It opens the heavens above you. It puts you in position to receive. And then when you sow seeds above the tithe, it measures out the measurement in which things are going to come to you. Hallelujah. See, your offering is your measuring stick or what's going to come through the window that's open above you. See, you thinking that all is just oh, all the pastor don't just want my money. It ain't got to keep your money in your pocket. You're going to be broke, but that's okay if that's what you want. That's why God says, hey, for those that will participate this year, you're going to see movement. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Those who are engaging in what we're talking about right now, you're going to see different. Amen. Psalm, I mean, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. Listen to this command that came from the mouth of the Apostle Paul under the direction of the Holy Ghost. From the Amplified Bible it says, Now as you abound and excel and are at the front in everything, notice, you are abounding, excelling in all these things. Your faith, expressing of yourself in the knowledge and zeal and love for, for us, 
You say, you're doing good. You got some stuff going on. Gifts of spirit may be moving. You may get a dream or a word from here to here now and now, from the whatever. But notice what he goes on, he says, see to it that you come to the front now also and bow and excel in the grace work of alms giving also. That is a command. Just like you put forth effort in everything else, see that you put forth effort in your alms giving, the grace of giving as well. Second Corinthians uh, chapter 8, wasn't it? Yes. Verse 7. Yes. It says you see to it that you abound in this. Give just as much attention at this time of the service as any other time. This ain't the time for you to walk up here, drop your money in the play. Girl, did you see yet? How you doing? Girl, look how fat that baby's getting. Oh, blah, blah. And oh, hey, hey, this ain't the time for socialization. This is time for you to go up here and drop your money in the offering play. Be like, glory to God, I'm releasing that seed. That seed is going to go do this. And I command that seed to do that. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, as you walk back to your seat. This ain't the time to be shaking everybody's hand. There's a function going on here. This is a purpose here. I got needs I need to be met. And I'm honoring God. I'm coming before the Lord and ready to receive from him. I spent some time preparing my tithe and my offering at home. So when I get here, glory to God, I can release my faith in that. And now all the way back to my seat, I'm just praising God because I don't deal what God told me to do. And I've got, I've got myself in agreement here and expectation. And if you're going to do any talking, what you ought to be doing is say, glory to God, I just released my seat. Can you touch and agree with me that, that what I'm believing God for will come to pass? And should nobody look at you crazy because they should be in the same frame of mind. Well, yes, bless God. When we get through, can we touch and agree about mine? See that you abound in this grace also. And the result will be chapter 9. Verse 6, I'm from the Amplified Bible, measuring stick. Remember this, how you, uh, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. It didn't say you wouldn't, it just says you're going to reap small. If you sow small, it's mad about it, then it's going to come back small. People are going to be mad to give it back to you. That's what it just said there. And he who sows uh, 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 generously, that the blessing may, uh, may come to someone, he will also reap generously. Somebody will go, hey, that's how it's going to come back to you. Verse 7, let, let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sharply or under compulsion, for God loves and takes pleasure in and prizes above all other things and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, promptest, joyful, somewhat happy to do it giver. That is a long way from you sitting there talking about all the pastor want is my money. It says not grudgingly or under compulsion. That's why I don't stand up here and put pressure on you to give. You need to purpose in your heart with the Holy Spirit. What am I supposed to be doing here? Amen. Because you and the Lord know what you need. This is why it says, see to it that you give attention to this grace of almsgiving. Why? Because you and the Lord know what you need. And the Lord knows how to help you measure out correctly so that you can receive correctly. If you need a field of vegetables, then sowing a patch is not going to help. But if you thought all oh, you need a patch and you, and, and, and you need a field, you're going to be in trouble, right? You receive your field. But it's not going to be enough. This is why it says, see to it that you pay attention in this area too. So that when it comes time to start your sowing and your giving, that the Holy Spirit is involved. Because here's the mistake that we make, and I've made it for years. We go to God and we ask God to help meet our needs, and then we never include in our need our offering and our tithe. Because part of your need is to be big in giving to the kingdom of God. God needs you to be that way, so that's part of your need. So if you need your mortgage paid, Lord, I need my mortgage paid, and I need offering to give. You need them both. And that's why it says, and he supplies seed to the sower. 
Once you've purposed in your heart, you've paid attention, you've purposed in your heart, you've talked to God, then God is responsible now for making sure that the measuring stick that you need is there so that when you sow it, it's going to be measured right. But none of this happens if you don't pay attention. If, 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 if your mind is wrapped around, oh, I got a tithe. And I got a car payment. Well, if I take half of my tithe to pay my car payment, got to be all right with it. Okay, well, fine. Hey, hey. It's your money. Do what you want to do with it. But just realize you're being robbed. That thought didn't come from God. For many of us sitting in this room, the problem isn't that you don't want to give. The problem is, is in your financial affairs, God is not involved. So when you're making dumb decisions on the front end, you didn't ask him. Now it's time to pay the piper, and the first person to get scratched off the list when the piper show up is God. But it wasn't that you didn't want to give it. It's because you didn't ask before you did what you did, and now you're in trouble because you got to spend the money, and you spend the money, and now there ain't nothing left for God. And it's a double-edged sword that's working on you because now you need to be given to get out of that, but the pressure of not having enough keeps you from giving, which is a perpetual state of stuck. Come on, folks, it's a game that the devil uses in the body of Christ, and most of God's people are ignorant to it, don't pay any attention to it, because we don't give the same attention to the grace of arms like we need to. And we just come up here and chuck a few dollars, a tip God, an offering plate, and move on. It's amazing. But I'm walking you through each component. Amen. Luke chapter 6. Some of you may not even thought about this this way. Hopefully I'm answering some questions for you this morning. Measuring stick, verse 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run it over, shall men give it to your bosom. For what measure you meet with it shall be measured to you again. You can sow. Basically what they're saying, here, make it quick so I can move on. If you use a shovel to sow, you read back, you're, you're, you're read back shovels. If you use a dump truck to sow, you're re back in dump truck loads. You get it? Yeah. You're the measurer. Yeah. Whatever you sow, it's coming back, but you get to determine at what increments and what levels it comes back to you as. If you spend time talking to the Lord, he will show you the measurement stick that you use, that you should use at this time. Every time an offering plate passes across your lap doesn't mean it's time for you to participate. And then it doesn't mean that you're to participate the same way you participated last time. You got to know at each point what's going on because different grounds do different things. I could throw a seed out there on the concrete. It may eventually get down in there and sprout up a twig or two. But it'd be a whole lot different when I put it into cultivated soil. Different grounds do different things. Amen. I could plant some seeds out there in sand. It may do a little something. But if I go down to, down, down to the Mississippi Delta and around there in there and plant some stuff, I guarantee you're going to get some, some harvest back. So you got to know when you participating in a, when you went to a church service and it's concrete. And you went over here and they were sand. But when you went down there, it's Mississippi Delta soil. So you got to be able to hear the Holy Spirit tell you where you are and what's supposed to be going on. And when you went Mississippi, Mississippi Delta soil, hey, that's when the Holy Spirit is going to say, dump it all in here. Because when you get ready to start harvesting out of here, it's going to be coming back in, uh, in boatloads. Why? Because the ground is cultivated for that. So you got to know what you're doing. And you can't just be depending on what you know. Well, they look like they prosperous over here at this church. Don't mean nothing. Don't mean a thing. And then you went to this church. Oh, so this little small ring dink church. Only got two or three people in it. You know, we ain't going to say, man, this $20 would be enough over here. But you don't know that church is praying. Tithe. 
tithing uh, out of that ministry, believing God, pulling on God. And it may be 20 people sitting in there, but it's Mississippi Delta soil. But you went down at that big church and it was looking all good and the, and the choir was rocking and everybody was rocking and rocked your pocketbook right out your uh, uh, lap and you dumped all your money in it. Because we've been in them services before. I was in a service. Quantrill and I was in a service. And this man hooped and preached and hooped and spit and hooped. And I mean, he had them people swinging from the rafters. And at the end, he was like, and God's going to bless you. And woo -hoo, he was just going. And them people got to throwing wallets and purses and dumping. And I'm like, this man's a con artist. Don't they see through this? <laughs> then it was time to bless the money. So then the man, other pastor who was over, called all of the pastors who was in the, in the meeting up to speak a few words, to say some stuff. And said, so, you know, I got up and straight out and told them. I said, hey, you know, y'all better be. Uh, I said, if you ain't asked God what you were supposed to do and you just did what you wanted to do, it don't matter. And. It got real quiet, but so what? Hey, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting to the point now where the Bible told me to be bold. And ain't no need of me sitting there looking at folks get robbed and don't say nothing. I'm just responsible as the crook up here stealing. I bet my wallet stayed in my pocket. I ain't giving nothing here. Not a dime, Lord. And if I missed it, too bad, forgive me, but I ain't coming out here. <laughs> nope. But you got to know. That's why it says, see, that just like you abounded in everything else, just like you're giving attention and you're after everything else, see to it you do the same level of intensity when it comes to your giving. Amen. Preaching. The teaching portion of the word of God. What is it of uh, the church service rather? What is it for? Just like the offering provides for you physically increases. It puts you in a place because I forgot to read that scripture over there where it says in Corinthians where it says it provides helps you come to the place where you need no aid or support. But you furnish in abundance for every good work and to do every charitable donation God leads you to do. That's what it does for you. It puts you in a position where you need no help. Now, preaching provides for your spiritual increase. The, the offering portion of the service takes care of the physical things in your life. The word now is going to deal with the spirit man and the spiritual things in your life. Jane, I mean, uh, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Let me get there. Now, you can go home and, and study down more, more into this, and you'll find much more than what I'm seeing here this morning. I'm giving you the basic outline. Amen. Jeremiah chapter uh, 3, verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. The preaching and the teaching portion of the word of God is to make sure your spirit man gets full and that your spirit man has knowledge and understanding, spiritual strength, wisdom of God can function in your life. That you know how to whoop that devil when he pump, pump, pops his head out at you. Or when he tries to run up in your house and take over, you know what to do. Yeah. Or when somebody tries to confuse you with a script, you know how to put the word back on them. Amen. You know how to tell the devil to shut up. I don't believe nothing you just said. Because the scripture says this. This is what the, the, this, this portion of the service is for. Right now you're being fed with knowledge and understanding of the purpose of a church service. Faith for this is coming. Why? It's being preached to you. Second Timothy chapter 4. Notice what it says there. Second Timothy chapter four, verse two, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, rebuke, reprove, exhort with long suffering and doctrine. Preach the word. What is the word for? It's to bring rebuke where rebuke, where rebuke is needed. It's to bring reproof, exposure where exposure is needed. Amen. It's to exhort where exhortation is needed. 
There are areas in our lives where we need to be rebuked, and that's what the Word is for. How dare you get mad at the preacher because he preached what God told him to preach? Get mad at God. Go talk to him about it. No, there's a scripture that says when they despise you, they ain't really despising you, they're despising me. That's why I don't get mad anymore because you poke your lip out at me. You ain't, you ain't really, really mad at me. Who you're mad at is God because that's what he said. You just take that on me because I'm the messenger, but I don't care. It's all right. But if you, need, if you want your life to grow, there will be times that the word will rebuke you. Because the Bible says that the that, that only way that the tree can grow is he has to time to time prune off some stuff. And when pruning takes place, it's painful and it's not comfortable. But it's necessary if you want to grow, if you want to be better, if you want to grow stronger, if you want your fruit to become larger. Amen. It's required. Back up in, in verse 16 of chapter 3, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instructions for righteousness. Why? So that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly uh, furnished for every good work. It is to provide for your spiritual increase. It is to provide for your spiritual wherewithal, knowing who you are, knowing your strength, where are your boundaries. It is to provide for your spiritual edification so that you can move forward in the things of the Spirit. Amen. The offering takes care of you physically. The preaching and teaching takes care of you spiritually. It's a complete package. God's wearing a complete package here. But guess what? If you sat there through praise and worship and you skipped out on did none of that, um, then you may not be getting anything at this moment. I'm just asking God's grace to come up on some of y'all because some of y'all were stubborn this morning. But I'm just believing God, the grace of God is getting this to you so that we can get some things corrected here. Because this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It don't look ridiculous to y'all. You know why? Because y'all looking this way. But if you were standing here looking this way and you had the view of everything, you would be like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's why a long time ago, Lord just told me, go into a church service. I don't even turn, just close your eyes and just focus on me. Because you turn around, you get discouraged sometimes. Just, just, just close your eyes and just focus on me. So that's why I come in here and I'll walk right to my spot and I'll turn around every now and then I peek and I start getting, oh, you're right, Lord. <laughs> Let me turn back around. Close my eyes. Because you turn around, see everybody just standing there. Seats all empty because ain't nobody came. That's discouraged. So, no, no, I can't, I can't, Lord. Uh -uh. Sometimes we want to come up here to help Quantra. Just, just, just give me the mic. Just go and sit down. Because we ain't getting ready, because I'm serious. You know why? Because she ain't got no business up here trying to pump you up. They should be supposed to be administering something. And when something is, is when, when something's being administered, then that means the person that's being ministered to should be receiving. When you go to the doctor, the doctor administers something. And you take something, right? What sense would it go to go to the doctor? And this would be this was this was my mom. My mom hated doctor. On her dying, she's dying. They trying to save her. She's balled up and not. Get your hands off me. Don't touch me. Because you're just being mean. They try to administer help to you and you, you refusing. And that's how it looks in here when the praise and worship team is up trying to administer God's grace and mercy and love and joy and peace. And you're sitting there resisting. Come on. Well, I'm just not expressive. That's a lie. You know why I can tell you that's a lie? Because you were created by an expressive God. So don't, don't, don't tell. No, you have repressed your emotions. But you are an expressive person. Because you've been recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, and all things are of God. And God is the one who wrote this book and said, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. And if you don't praise him, the rocks are crying out for you. So don't tell me that, that you're not expressive. No, you choose not to be expressive. You got selective expresses. That's what you have. You're selective with it. 
I bet if he was the one to hit that $1.2 billion Powerball, we would saw some expression, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. I'm guarantee we would have. But guess what? You hit it in Jesus, but you don't see it that way. And that's why you don't get the benefit from it. All right, so that's the preaching of the word. Now the prayer portion. Now, when I'm talking about prayer, and this is the whole reason God had me teach this, because he started dealing with me about this. And Oral Roberts, I mean, uh, Richard Roberts came right at the end of that meeting and said, I'm going to tell you pastors now. The Holy Spirit wants to move in your services. And then he stopped. And he turned back around and he said, and it's going to take more than two minutes. In other words, God needs some time. Mark chapter 16. Now, you may say, well, this prayer have to do with this. I'm getting ready to tell you. Amen. And I'm not so much right now talking so much about pre-service prayer yeah. pre at this point. Now, pre-service prayer is important. Let me just plug this right here because he didn't add this in there, but I'm going to just say a little bit about pre-service. Pre-service prayer is designed for us to come together and decree and declare what God has mandated for the ministry in the city Amen. or in the area. It's to pull down the strongholds. It's not to come in here and pray about your right. four and no more. You should do that at home. Amen. It's to come in together to, to, to serve the, the global mission of what God has the ministry there for. That's pre-service prayer. Right now, when I'm talking about this portion of what God is talking about here, it's not pre-service prayer. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go preach this gospel. You can't do any preaching of the gospel without the first three. Praise and worship, offering, and the preaching of the word, can you? No praise and worship, nobody going to hear anything. No offerings, you can't go do it because you don't have any money. So won't, won't no word be preached. Verse 16. And he that believeth is bapt and, and, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. You don't argue with people. And these signs shall follow them that believe, that believe, that believe, that believe, them that believe, not just the preacher, them that believe. In my name. You will cast out, you will lay some hands, you'll do all these things that he just said there in his name. But here's what I want to get down to, verse 20. It says, and the Lord went on to heaven, verse 19. And they went forth preaching everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following a man. The word them in your Bible is an italicized writing, right? That means it was added to help the sentence flow. But let's take it out and get the original Greek. And the Lord working with, with what? The word. The Lord working with and confirming the word with signs following. Church services are supposed to be designed that when you get to that place in God where the Lord says, now it's time for me to show up and go to work. It is all the praise that set the atmosphere. It's opened you up to receive the word and God's been preaching. And now it's time for him to start confirming what he's been preaching. Amen. Amen. That's what it's for. Not looking at the clock, oh, glory to God, I got, I got to hurry up because if I don't hurry up, they're going to start walking out on me. <laughs> the football game's coming on. Who cares? I care less. By now, you should have figured out, I'm, I, I like sports, but I could care less. If I'm going to put them on a balanced scale, sports, God, sports, God, you can get rid of the sports. Amen. Man, please, I'm not getting ready to rush nothing. I would like to be at the Chiefs game, but they start at noon. Guess where I'm at at noon? Right here. And I'm not getting ready to cut back on the service because somebody, I'll give you some tickets. We're going to give you, hey, I've been trying to give me some tickets for years. I ain't going, no, that's okay. Keep them because I can't be there. This is important to me. 
and it is very important for me for 2016, I am not going to be the same man. Amen. God wants to confirm the word with signs following. Amen. Let me get these in here, and then I'm going to tell you the rest of this. Matthew chapter 26. Let's look at it. Am I okay, Micah? All right. Micah said I'm okay. Mike is really the person that controls the service. <laughs> Matthew 26, verse 41. It says here, this is what Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane says, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Your spirit wants to watch and pray, but your flesh is what wants to get up and leave, wants to go to sleep, don't want to read the Bible. See, your flesh wants to get involved, but it says your spirit wants to. Start yielding to your spirit. Who's in charge here? A few more things here. One more, one more place. Two more places. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the, uh, the creator of, of the ends of all the earth, faints not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint. Notice he gives power to the faint. You come in here faint, get into praise and worship. Guess what you start getting? Strength, power. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. Amen. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall, be utterly, shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord Amen. shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Those that will wait on the Lord. They will get in here and wait on the Lord. Now, Set over here that word, wait on the Lord for a second. I'm going to come back to it. First Thessalonians, last place. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5. Verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and that are over you in the Lord and admonishing, admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace with yourself. Now, here's why I want to read this. The only way that you're going to get to know the people that you're laboring with is you're going to have to spend some time with them with spiritual things. Okay? Therefore, prayer, it opens up the atmosphere or it opens up the service for you to receive. Number, how did he say it to me? It, it, it causes you to number one, it confirms the word. Number two, it connects you with the spirit and it renews the spirit in you. It causes you to build on that hunger and that thirst for righteousness. It pulls you in. It draws you into God. It draws God. It makes God even bigger unto you. The issue with a lot of us in this room is we have lost our sensitivity to the things of God. And that is a result of what I just preached this morning, but it all stems back to the beginning, how you live your life. I'm encouraging you. What are you willing to do different this year? Because we can do some stuff different this year. Amen. I'm determined. God is not a liar. It says he is faithful because he promised it. All right? Come on, smile. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise for your word. It's right. Rebuke us with it. Correct us. Let it edify us. Build us up. 
I thank you for it. We receive it all. I receive it. I take it because I know you love me. And I've heard the word of God say, whom you love, you chase us. Well, glory to God. Thank you for loving us this morning. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.